Hey everyone, welcome back. I got here. Thanks for checking out another episode of Esports Analysis. As we hop into this one, we are on board with Scump as they are going to battle against the Toronto Ultra. So I picked this one for a reason, just because at that Minnesota launch event, Toronto was extremely good at search and destroy. They were probably one of the best. They were absolutely one of the top three teams at that event during search and destroy. But they were not very good at respawns. I think they were one in five over the course of the event at respawns. So I wanted to tune into this one to see if Toronto has made any changes in terms of their approach to some of these respawn game types. So with this, as we hop into the analysis here, again, right above my face and underneath Scump's face in the top right-hand corner, there is a mini-map. So I'm going to draw on that so you guys can be able to see what exactly is going on here, what teams are going to be looking to do. So to begin with here, the first hills, obviously, over here on the top side of the map. I just colored it in with green. And as they rotate to the second hard point, the second hard point is also on this left side of the map. So Chicago got this back left spawn. So if you're Chicago, you wanted to hold down that spawn for as long as you could so that you have spawns going into the next hard point. And what happened, I don't know if you saw Scump that when he came off a of spawn right there, Scump spawned on the opposite side of the map. So he did end up spawning out. Now, it'll be interesting to see what happens from here on out. It does look like they've regained control of the map. So a couple of kills there from Scump. We'll see where he comes up. He does come up in construction. So just to draw this real quick, he is spawning back construction over here. So this is the spawn that you want. You don't want to have the spawn that's over by ammo. So I just drew that in red on the map. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but you can kind of see it right at the bottom of that mini map. And the reason why you don't want to be spawning ammo is because there's only really two ways in. You can go through this choke right here, or if you don't go through that way, you have to jump over top. Now, you could also go through this bottom platform area and go mid, but if you go that way, then there's probably going to be somebody up on top of sandbags or on top of platform. So somebody on sandbags right here or somebody top platform up there. Usually there's an AR, so formal R city, somebody like that. Uh, post it up up there. So if you go, if you elect to go through that way, you're probably not going to have that much success. So as we start here, you can see that Chicago got the majority of the time in that second hard point, which is why they have an 82 to 14 lead. And then again, earlier we were talking about why I prefer this map or why I like this map, just because now it has ping ponged back to the other side. So now we are in that barbershop hill and it does appear that Chicago is getting that spawn. So I'm just watching the mini map on Scump's screen, but two blue arrows came up behind him. You see Arcity's Envoy, you see Scump. All these people are coming off of this spawn. However, they were able to flip, but they haven't been able to get control of the hill yet up until right there. So it does look like potentially these last 20 seconds are going to go to them. I'd imagine Imagine that person that just took out Seth up top will begin to rotate to the other side. I don't think that person's going to push in. So decent job there, but just to kind of lock this down and I'll tell you real quick. So in this third hard point back here, this is where you want to spawn. One thing that I've noticed that Chicago does all the time is that they leave open this ruins route or they might just have one person over there. So just watch this as it rotates back to the other side. Um, so the second set of rotations, when it gets back to that barbershop hill, I've noticed that they pay a lot of attention to that tree door, which is the right side. And they pay a lot of attention to mid map, but it seems like somebody always sneaks through over towards ruins and by those arches. So we'll pay attention to that as it goes back. But again, we've ping pong back to the other side. They've been able to slay out and now they have control of construction again. So everything's kind of going Chicago's way at the moment. You see somebody bottom dirt over here, just kind of watching the flank on the left side. Somebody is through those zigzag stairs. Um, it looks like Scump just got an assist there. So that person must have went down. So with eight seconds left, again, these final eight seconds are going to go to Chicago as it goes back to ruins. So again, ping ponging all the way back to the other side of the map. If we're going to draw this, you don't want to be the team that's spawning over towards ammo, you want to be this team that is spawning back ruins or back barbershop. Most of the time, this spawn comes in at back barbershop. So if you're spawning back barbershop, then really all you have to watch is you want to send somebody here underneath pillars so that you can watch that escape. Normally, you want to have somebody in the back. So let me go ahead and erase some of this just so you can see it. So somebody going through pillars, you want to have somebody in the back with an AR that's holding down that route. And then also... You want to have somebody going through barbershop watching mid. 
And the whole reason why is because the enemy team, so if the enemy team is spawning out over towards ammo, a lot of times, so this is where you see Skump on screen right now, he's at ammo, but a lot of times you'll see somebody go up towards top plat and then jump down and then hit a flank over towards this arches area. That's exactly what you're seeing Skump do right now. So if Skump continues this route and he goes over towards cat, which he won't because there's only three seconds left, but if they were to hit that flank, that's one way that you could pinch that fifth hard point and take over the majority of the points there so as we rotate back to first remember we went through this to begin with but as we're in first you really want to hold down this back construction spawn just because not necessarily for the time in first hard point but so that you have the majority of the time as it rotates into that second hard point I will say that fifth hard point, Toronto did a really nice job of coming back. They were down by about 100. Now they're only down by about 50. Um, so if they could just c control or flip one time, so in these next 24 seconds, if they could slay out and they were able to flip this here, then that would get them right back in the ballgame. But it does look like they're still spawning top rugs over there as they're trying to get into that bridge hard point. Now they are spawning out a little bit. So I'm not sure if you saw that, but when Skump died and came off of spawns, they did spawn ammo. So if I'm looking at the main map right now, it does look like Chicago is going to have control of this current hard point, but they are spawning out. So we'll see if they can push out. And then now it flipped again. So I don't really like that pinch by methods there. So just to kind of show what was going on here is they were spawning ammo. So Chicago was spawning ammo. They were able to push in and they had control of this building here where the hard point is. But if you were to watch, Toronto was spawning. This isn't really the best purple, but Toronto did have control here and they were spawning in platform. So all they had to do is just continue pushing through this way from construction and instead methods pushed through bottom and he killed skump from behind and then when skump came off of spawn he spawned back in construction so that's where that flip came in and that's probably they had an opportunity there to really come back now the last 15 seconds of this hill looks like it's going to go towards chicago and if you're Toronto, that's that's probably going to end up being all she wrote. We'll see if they're able to come back. But this seems like a pretty insurmountable lead at this point. So with that, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's listen in a little bit just because there's only 40 seconds or so left. So let's hear their their conversation, see what they're talking about in terms of strategy. I gave it right, I gave it right, I gave it right. In East oh, you weren't even like looking at it. You were just sampling it. Me? No. They were able to flip spawns again. So they did give up this spawn, but they only need 20 seconds to win. So at this point, you just want to get into the chokes and then stop Toronto as they rotate to the other side, just like Seth just did right there on Classic. Just hold down these chokes and control them as they try to go towards the other side. I have your low dirt. I have your low dirt. I got bands. That was the first guy. Bottom mid, Nick, then. Yeah, one's another one flat. Is my dirt still open? No, no, no. I have dirt. I have dirt. Bottom dirt now. Bottom dirt now, Kimmy. Bottom dirt now, Kimmy. Nice nade there from RCDs to kind of block off that doorway on the left hand side of the current hill. And with two seconds left. Oh, maybe. Yep, that'll be all she wrote. So. Nice win there. Seth didn't really do too much. It looked like Seth only had 18. But let's go ahead and let's see the final scoreboard here. Formal had 28. Um, Formal just seems, you know, some of these maps where he can just focus on one line of sight, one lane, he seems to be doing a really nice job, as he always does. But this game is great for him. Gunless. So fi only 50 seconds in Hill, but he did end up having 30. So 30 and 20. And then look at the scores down below. Classic only had 19. Cammy had 18, Looney had 18. So in the slaying department, honestly, it wasn't that off balance, but I think one team just had control of the map a lot longer than the others. So with that, guys, thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Esports Analysis. If you have any comments, I've been loving the feedback. I love having conversations with you guys. So if you have any comments whatsoever, put them down below. I love answering them. 
Um, and I'll be sure to do that with each and every one that I come across. Don't forget to leave a like before you head on your way. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're only a week away from London. I cannot wait for that event. It seems like crowds in London just go crazy. So I can't wait to watch that event in London. But with that, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode and all the support recently. At this point, I feel like I'm rambling. So I'm going to head out. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.